officially announced the transfer of American midfielder Michael Bradley to Toronto FC for $10 million. Bradley was in his second season. Major day in Major League Soccer, the kind Toronto FC desperately needed. Introducing two high-priced transfers, English international striker Jermaine Defoe and American international midfielder Michael Bradley from Roma of Italy. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce another new member for TFC. And for our fans, please welcome Michael Bradley. I had done my homework. I knew a lot about the, the city, the club. Um, I, I knew how much potential there was. And it was, it was so exciting to me to think about what we could turn it into. MLS in past years had been a place where people would come in the twilight of their career. Michael was coming back in his prime. He wanted to establish something here in Toronto. I can tell you all that I have never been more excited, and more determined, and more motivated for any challenge in my entire career. It seemed to really fit. We had never made the playoffs, and we had no culture of success, really no culture of winning at all. Um, there's no one that epitomizes winning to me and having a winning mentality on a daily basis than Michael Bradley. I knew there was going to be a lot of work. I knew it was, was going to take some time. It wasn't going to come easy in any way, but it was something that I was, I was really excited about. The club had finally found their true leader in Michael Bradley. Toronto FC, as the final whistle sounds, for the third time this season, are held off the score sheet. It takes time to establish a winning mentality and winning culture within the club. And just bringing in certain players, talented players, it's not enough. When you start to put together a leadership team that includes the general manager and the coach, I think it's really important to have the same philosophy on the way that you want to play the game and the same vision for where you want to go. We were just on different uh, wavelengths when it came to that philosophy and that vision. And sometimes uh, when that happens, you're going to have to change directions. We're here to, uh, to announce a, a decision to change coaches. Um, we're bringing on Greg Vanny. Uh, who's sitting right beside me. He's Bringing in an unproven head coach like Greg Vanny, it was seen by a lot of people to be a roll of the dice, but it was a poignant one and an important one, inevitably, in creating team success. You know, getting to know all of those guys and how they work, how they train, you know, was a big part of us trying to establish our direction going into you know, the off season of 2014-15, looking ahead. You know, one of our challenges is we need to, three designated players to be able to play together, to be able to work off of each other, to be the core of the team so that you could build around it. And we knew at that time we didn't really have that mix with Jermaine and with Gilberto. Three DPs don't win you anything. You need much more than that. You need a, a, a complete team. But if you choose to have three DPs, then you better get them right. I think the club did an incredible job in bringing in Seba and Josie and finding the ways to make that work. I'm looking forward to living here, playing here, and, and you know, I hope I, I make the fans very happy with my play on the field because, uh, you know, they, they seem very passionate. To be, so to speak, a franchise player where you can come in and kind of help transform what's going on here, I, I took that upon myself as a huge responsibility. Perfect. And now we'll do arms crossed. Yeah, just like that. For me, the motivation is uh, always the same. I want to always to win. I want uh, to be the best. You know, the three of us, we complement each other very well on the field and off the field. And I think from the beginning, they, when they got here, they, they saw a lot of the same things that I did. A city and a club that were, were dying for, for some real success. As the team starts to hit preseason 2015, you start to see some of these talents coming together and you know you have the foundation to start putting the rest of the pieces together. In our league, those things can't happen overnight, but we knew we had the foundation to build something great. 
um, we started to, to really, you could see a real shift in terms of the group, the mentality, the types of guys that we had. We wanted to give everything to, to Toronto and to the franchise. An air of expectation, Javinko. Still Javinko. Oh, Javinko. Oh, my God. That is absolutely exceptional. He's probably scored the goal. It takes Toronto FC to the promised land of the playoffs. It's 2 nothing. That evening was so special to me because it, it was really the first major step in the project that we had started. When I got here, you saw kind of a base of a team. And then when we made those free agent acquisitions with Clint and with Steven and then Drew um, and Will, we saw a team come together. At that point, you don't, you don't even really need anybody yelling and screaming because the rest of the group is, is, is going. I think from the moment we walked into the locker room, everybody was hell-bent on getting back to that game, hell-bent on having that opportunity again. You had a group of guys who, who lived one of the biggest disappointments uh, of our careers. And for 364 days after, we never once lost sight of, of what we were trying to do. Day one, baby, 2017. It's 44 days ago, Toronto FC played in the MLS Cup Final at BMO Field, and they're back at it to open their 2017 preparations today here at the Kia Training Ground. When we came back in the preseason, and I think it was, um, obviously there was some disappointment, but I think there was some anger. We had really high expectations for, for the final in 2016, and, um, to have it kind of fall through our fingertips. It was a real wake-up call. There, there, was a, there was a fire in us. You know, you looked around the room and you saw a bunch of hungry, motivated individuals. It's easy for everybody to, to talk as if they're more motivated than ever. But when preseason starts and you actually have to live it every single day, that's not easy. But you have to have a group that just works. Toronto FC knew they had a very good team, but you always have an X factor within a group, just a player that would complement Altador and Javinko in attack. And that player for Toronto FC was Victor Vasquez. Hey, hey. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. To meet you. Well, quite a welcoming party. Yeah. Yeah. He was kind of the missing ingredient for us, and I thought he was, if there was any one player that put us over the top, it was Victor. We were very good, but some teams had figured out that they could sit back on us. And so it was critical for us to find a top level sort of international talent to uh, sort of solve the riddle. And Victor immediately was that piece. From the first training session we had, you know, every touch he made was perfect. I know that I believed early on that uh, if we were gonna win this year, that Victor would be our X factor. When uh, you play for Barcelona, uh, you have to have something special. 
and Victor for us is uh, this kind of player. Yeah, it was high expectation. I know, but I knew that uh, I had a new chance on, on a new challenge on my career. The players I know a lot of uh, Michael, uh, Seban, Josi because they play in Europe. Also, I really wanted to play with with them because I knew that it's going to be fun. And that should just about be it here at BMO Field. It is full time. It's a nil-nil draw for Toronto FC. Four games into the new MLS season. For TFC, three draws and one. Toronto FC will take a point on the road. It looked as if they might get a first win of the campaign, but that lead lasting. TFC wasn't playing poorly out of the gate in the 2017 season. They were just drawing games when they should have been winning games. Sometimes it is difficult, you know, because all the pieces has to has to lock together, you know. Toronto FC's first loss of the season in Columbus. Like the message now is, is pretty clear that the team needs to put together a defensive and attacking performance yes. and put together two halves. There wasn't panic, but there was this expectation within the group that there was so much more. It wasn't easy at the beginning, but when we found our, our way and we knew that we have to play in this way, everything it was more easy for us. It was a matter of us just clicking as a group, and once that started to happen, the defending connected a little bit with the attacking, and then you start turning draws into wins, and, and that's when we start to get on a roll. Vasquez into the path of Sebastian Javico! Sebastian Javico scores to give Toronto FC the lead. Into the middle, and it's headed in by Ricketts! And from nowhere, TFC are back level. There was always confidence. There was always a feeling like, we had, a, we had a real team. We just wanted it all. We wanted uh, to not only get back to the final, but win every, everything in our path. Side for Edwards. Edwards with a nice crossing. It's Hamilton! It's five for Toronto FC. The unbeaten run in MLS will stretch to eight matches. I think what you've seen with this team, it, it, it enjoys its victory and it celebrates success. Um, back to business the next day. We would use achievements and we would use exciting moments as, as motivation, as reinforcement to everything that we were doing. I think it really brought the group together because a lot of different players played a big part in a lot of different games. As the summer months hit and the temperatures warmed up, so did the team. They went on a miraculous run where they were simply playing teams off the field. Nicholas Hassler! Kadravinko picks it up. One last chance for TFC to try and win it in normal time. Vasquez through for Edwards. Edwards puts it back to Vinko! Sebastian Javico, he's won the Canadian Championship for Toronto FC! For me, one of the special things about this club is that, you know, just winning the Canada Cup isn't good enough. The mentality is always to win the next game, the next trophy. Through towards Josie Antonov! With all due respect to you know, those other competitions, they're, they're all very important in their own rights, but my obsession was solely winning an MLS Cup and getting back to that game and reversing what happened. Altidore giving chase, still Josie Altidore! It's 1-1! And Josie Altidore comes his in. It's Juvinko! Oh my goodness! He's Toronto done. FC gets a point that sets the new record for the most MLS points in the regular season. History, baby. History. Love it. We're a team that set goals as a group. Congratulations. Now set a new history. <laughs> and we wanted to check off every single box. One more little piece of hardware out there for us and lock in and we can go get it, all right? Yeah. The guys were excited. Woo! But deep in everybody's eye, you knew that guys wanted more, that there was a, a sense of yeah, we're doing, we're doing well, but we can do better. And, and the biggest moments are still coming.
The playoffs were crazy, and I think that's an understatement. Given the regular season that we had, we were gonna get teams best, most desperate attempt to beat us, and we relished that. Lovely play from Altidore down the right, saved by Robles, comes out towards Victor Vasquez, and Sebastian Javinko! Toronto FC with a 2-1 lead to take back to BMO Field for the second leg. Here's a ball flick through for Bradley Wright, so it's denied by Bono. Toronto FC will advance. Cleared away by Moore, only as far as Apple. What a save from Bono! Job done for TFC. 90 minutes separating them and an MLS Cup appearance for the second year in a row. All they have to do is win at home. Altidore is down after a clash with Athol. Looks to be in a lot of pain holding that right ankle. I remember going down and thinking to myself, you know, I don't think I can continue here. He needed a little time, but if he said he could go, he was going to go. Josie Altidore coming back into the game. I want to be on the field if, if an opportunity comes. Into the path of Altidore and Vasquez back to Josie Altidore! Josie Altidore! When Toronto FC needed a hero, Josie Altidore! Fortunately for me, the opportunity, the ball bounced the right way, and, and we were able to, to score the goal, get to the final. Toronto FC are Eastern Conference champions once again. Rematch, revenge, redemption, pick your favorite R word because they all apply right here for TFC. To have that rematch at BMO Field, where they were denied a victory just a year before. I think that this is the game that Toronto FC wanted. It was funny because all, all so many people wanted to do was, was talk about how nervous and, and how uptight we were and how, how loose Seattle was. Well, the feeling all week, Seattle seems looser. The belief is they would love to win this game, but TFC has to win this game. I have to say Seattle's gonna win. I'd probably. I'd have to say one zip. Seattle, I, I could see Seattle winning this by a goal. We paid attention, um, but we we waited for the whistle blow to, to really give our answer. Toronto FC, 90 minutes away from potential redemption as they face the Sounders here once again. The one thing we said to ourselves is no matter what happens in this game, when we get back into this locker room, none of us should have anything left in the tank. More on the back post, it's over the bar. We start amazing, we, we start to play like it was the last game on the on the season. It's Javinko, it's the one-handed save by Fry. At the beginning, I feel uh, this is the uh, one night. Space here, it's Victor Vasquez from distance, Fry does well. We're getting into these great spots, they clearly don't have answers for us. Javinko, wide! You're thinking, wow, we are battering this team, but you need to score a goal. I obviously remember the year before when we couldn't quite find the goal. A little bit, you're saying, oof, you know, this can't be happening again. Toronto FC have been dominant through 45 minutes of play. I remember coming into the locker room at halftime. I said, they're going to break. I said, there's no way they can handle us for 90 minutes. I said, we're not getting scored on today. My message to the guys was, you don't need to change anything. We need to remain patient. The, the more the game went on and the more they had to defend the amount they were having to defend, the spaces were going to get bigger, the opportunities were going to continue to come. We dominated the game in a way where they never had any real opening. They were bending and bending and bending, and all it's going to take is one. And sure enough, Delgado to Drew Moore. It was Drew to Mike. I was able to play a little one to Justin. Justin got it quickly to Victor. Myself to Seba, in one touch everything, then Seba could turn. All of a sudden, like, I saw Josie making this run, and I said, oh, there he goes. Altidore is on side here. And he takes his first touch away from goal, and I remember, like, kind of leaning, like, oh, is he going to get there? And the place going absolutely crazy. Josie Altidore through on goal. It's Josie Altidore, and the deadlock is broken. Josie Altidore sets Bebo Field alight on top. Josie finished it in a, in a clinical way. The relief and eruption in the stadium is there for everybody to hear. It was pandemonium. 
You know, I think a lot of times throughout the year, you're keeping your emotions in check when we score goals, but this one was a little bit different. So TFC lead, and it is the man that scored the goal to bring them to this final, does it again at pretty much the same moment in the match. After we scored the first goal, I felt like obviously we were in the driver's seat, but we were still very much deeply coaching and trying to you know, continue to, to push all the buttons we needed to give ourselves that edge. Now we have to keep going, keep controlling the game. Is there a chance for TFC to make certain in stoppage time? When Armando gets it and he rounds the goalkeeper, for sure in my mind I'm thinking this thing is done. And then he hits it off the post. <laughs> and then the ball comes over just, I don't know where, because I just put my, my body in front of the ball, and then I score. Toronto FC will win MLS Cup for the first time. That final goal that Victor tapped in was, I just kind of took a deep breath, and it was just a surreal moment when you take everything in and you know it's done. In a year when they have rewritten the record books, the greatest season in MLS history is now complete as Toronto FC win their first ever MLS Cup. From the final whistle until we raise the trophy, it's, it's a blur. It's the most distinctive and clear blur that I've ever been a part of. To do what we did and to set out to do it from day one, uh, that was a really special feeling. Very nice um, uh, moment, yeah. Well, it's not often in sport that justice is served, but tonight it certainly was. It was the best ending, and to be there with my teammates and to celebrate like we did, and to go through what we've gone through the past three years as a team, it meant everything. It was amazing feeling, you know, all together, all the crowd shouting, all the staff also hugging each other, you know, it was, I don't have words to explain, you know, because this feeling you cannot explain. And the trophy will have a home north of the border for the first time. When you have that trophy in your hands, when, you, when you're standing in front of, uh, you know, a group of guys that you've been through so much with and you have the chance to, to lift a trophy, there's no feeling like it in the world. I remember Michael sort of embracing me and so when we sort of caught eyes on the, on the field and not a whole lot needed to be said, but you could feel that, that we just understood that that was really the, the culmination of, of our dreams and, and our ambitions. Quite a night here at BMO Fields as Toronto FC are crowned MLS Cup champions. A few days after the final, I, I actually I stumbled on the, the press conference from, from when I first got here. And in that press conference, I, I said that I'd never been more excited or more motivated for any challenge in my career. And, and I, I meant it. I genuinely love and care about the city and, and this club. And to be able to be a part of what we've accomplished over the last few years, I, I've never been more proud of anything in my career. Campeones! Campeones!